I have good news for you. Your will is being written. I am what I am by the grace of God. As long as that grace does not fail, Satan will never fail. This revival you see will not be aborted. Greetings viewers all around the globe. This is Son of David, the voice of heaven. I'm here to do the part three of the previous message as I promised the other time. Before I proceed with the scriptures given to me, I just want to touch something. You know, before I uploaded the previous message, I was discussing with a friend. I said, you see, for some time now, I didn't talk about Prophet T.B. Joshua. I wasn't having issue with anyone. But now that I've talked about Prophet T.B. Joshua in this very message, trust me, you will see attackers. Now, the problem they have with me is not the message, but the people who I mention. If you watch, each time I teach without involving Damina or involving T.B. Joshua, I don't get attacked or reproved or criticized because they know what I come to teach comes with clarity but each time I introduce TB Joshua in the message they come not because what I'm saying is not clear not because they will be able to prove me wrong but because they don't like him they hate him so despite the clarity they don't just want to hear him in my messages how long will you do this why the, 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 the followers of Damina, they don't have problem with the truth that I come to teach, but they have problem with me correcting Damina. So long I drag his name to the message, even though I'm correct, they don't want to hear. Why? Because they are worshippers of name, not followers of truth. This was the embargo that Paul was trying to eradicate when he told them I didn't baptize in my name. When he was telling them that Apollo, Peter, and himself are for them and they are for Christ. Now, because he realized that these people were drawn to name, they were, they were so attached to these three people. So he wanted them to understand that these are representations, these are allegories, that they are not the main factor here, that Christ is the main deed. So who is Christ? The world. What is the world? The truth. So when you are hearing the word, your focus should be to distinguish, to differentiate, to prove if what that person is saying is true or not. Not the people. Because when you start looking at the people, it will become a skin, a blindfold that will prevent you from embracing the truth. And that will open you up to the destruction that the brother is trying to save you from. When I told him that, as soon as I uploaded the message, few minutes time I saw a comment and the woman said, stop exhorting T.B. Joshua. And I saw that comment attacking her, you know. Now, I replied her by saying, righteousness exhorts a nation. Sin is a reproach. Naturally, I didn't exhort, but rather I taught what the Lord revealed to me from the Bible, which was very clear. But since she decided to misinterpret it to exhortation, the Spirit gave me that scripture and I quoted it. Righteousness exhort a nation. Sin is a reproach. So, if a man walked with God diligently, his righteousness should exhort him. Are you saying that now? So, now, what am I saying this? I have told us before that nothing in this world will stop the name of Prophet T.B. Joshua. Nothing will stop his legacy. No. The same way you preach Paul, you preach John, you preach, I've taught all this before. Now that's the same way his name will be preached. Why? Because God promised his own everlasting name. When you study the book of Isaiah 56, Isaiah 56, let's see what the Bible said there. I think at verse 5. Even unto them will I give in my house and within my walls a place and a name better than all better than of sons and of daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. An everlasting what? An everlasting name that shall not be cut off. 
Why did they use the word that shall not be cut off? Because God knows how human beings function in this world we are. That men can embark on a quest to bury your knee, to silence you. Are you seeing that now? So, and there is a shorty here. There is an assurance here. There is a guarantee here that this name will not be cut off. So, that is to say, for God's word to be kept, God will mechanize his people. He will mechanize things that will bring about the, 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 the long-lasting and the, 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 the permanence of the name which he has given his own. Are you seeing that now? So, before I proceed to the scriptures concerning what I came here to teach, you know, the, 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 the Lord prevented me from doing my will concerning my previous album. So, I was trying to upload the full album on YouTube, but he said 20 minutes. I should not allow the song to exceed 20 minutes. I was like wondering, ah, which one is 20 minutes? The songs will not play till the end if I should you know reduce the duration. After the compilation, uh, compilation the, 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 the song we not, you know, people will not understand or even know where I'm driving to. So I was sad about this instruction because of my knowledge that these songs won't, at least, the songs um, should at least get to three minutes, four minutes, but now maybe it will be one minute and a few seconds because of the, 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 the time duration each of them will play. Why? Because there's an instruction that the whole compilation should not exceed 20 minutes so but i can't argue with god i had to you know upload it like that so to me i felt like okay those that will hear this song they might just decide to go and search them on other platform to hear the full song maybe it's like a thriller you understand or like a, an advert so that's the way i concluded it i never knew that god had plans so later he made me to understand he came to me after i obeyed after this is recent now, and if you go and check that album, you see the time I uploaded it. So this is of recent, I think something last week or last two weeks. So he he came to me and said that your album is not yet complete, that two songs are remaining to complete it. So he said, go and do those two songs to complete it. What I uploaded there is 12 songs and uh, that i making it an album. So, but he said two is remaining, which is to say 40 songs to make an album. So when he said to, I, I didn't get it clear at the beginning. So later, he gave me a revelation concerning a song that has to do with Prophet T.B. Joshua, which I eventually titled Justice for T.B. Joshua. So, and he gave me another song again that has to do with the betrayer of, a, of friendship, the betrayer of friendship because of um, Little Money, which I titled the song Small Money. So. And he wanted me to educate the world with these songs. So then Anna had a flashback of the time he first told me to not to release that and that not to release more than 20 minutes. So the thing became clear to me. So the understanding now came to me, now the light now came to me that the song was not complete. That is why he didn't allow me to upload the full album. But he didn't speak once because we prophesy in parts. The message comes fragmentally. So when you begin to put them together procedurally, because it might not come once. Today you might get a portion. Tomorrow you get another fragment. So when you join it together, it will make a whole. Are you saying that now? So that was when Anna understood why he didn't allow me to upload the full album. Why am I saying this? This song is coming. To those of you who hate hearing his name in my sermon, you will also hear his name in my music. Why the legacy will not die? God promised an everlasting name. Not to just him, but to all that will truly serve him. He said more than the names of sons and daughters. Are you seeing that? So all believers are sons and daughters. So there is a name given to them as sons and daughters. But what God is saying to the eunuchs, those that will keep their self, consecrate their self. Are you getting me now? Yield their self to God completely. God is saying he's going to give them a name beyond that of sons and daughters. 
and the name will be an everlasting name. That's why all believers cannot be known all around the world. No. But those who will single themselves out to work for God, to die for God, there is an extraordinary name that will be given to them. It's a promise and it's a prophecy. So you can't stop it. Are you seeing that? You can't stop it. So the song is coming. I want you to respect it. And even if you don't like it, you will like it by force because the melody will be unresistible. Yes, and if you don't play it, your neighbor will play it. And when they begin to play, you will hear it. So to those of you who see T.B. Joshua as a nightmare, you will die of high BP because we have not started talking about him. The legacy has not started at all. No. What you are seeing now is a preamble of what is to come because it will rise beyond this prophecy said so in, in Revelation level that they will come up here. He said, come up here. So they were ascending. So that ascension was not talking about physical resurrection and ascension. Mm -mm. It's talking about height. It's talking about greatness. People that were buried. People that were reduced. Are you seeing that now? People that were persecuted, murdered with words. They were slandered. So, and their glory and crown was casted on the ground. But God is saying they will resurrect and they will go up. Their glory will go up. So that's it. So I've taught this concerning uh, a message I, I titled Two Witnesses. Please, I will drop one of the link there, the part one. That part one will lead you to the part two and the part three. is a very profound and deep message which I would want you to miss. Seriously. And when you are done listening to that message, you will be thankful to God that you came across this channel. Yes. The reason I'm, I'm, I'm recommending the message to you is because some of the things we'll be teaching here, we have connection with the message. So, but I can't really delve into the things I taught before because of time and uh, so that it won't appear boring to those who have heard it before. But to those of you who are new, please do it. We help you to get this message completely. God bless you as you do that. Now, today, there is a scripture I, I want us to touch concerning the leaders of Nigeria. When you check the book of Isaiah 56, Isaiah 56. I want you to open your Bible there. Isaiah 56, starting from verse 9. Now, before the verse, there is a subtitle there that says, Israel's irresponsible leaders. That's to say, bracket now, Nigeria's irresponsible leaders. Now, these leaders are split into two fragments. Now, your political leaders, which, your, which are your governmental leaders now. Then, and your religious leaders. So let's see what the Bible says, what prophecy says about this time we are. Remember what I do, astrological and prophetic teachings, taking you back to the past, the present, and take you to the future. I make everything clear with the signs, with the logos you see happening around you. Now, verse 9, all ye beasts of the field, come to the void. Ye, ye, all ye beasts in the forest. Child of God, when you look at this, literally, you will think God is talking about beasts. No, he's not talking about... God does not have business with animals. Are you getting me now? When he said, all ye beasts of the field, what God is actually saying is that your leaders are beasts. Your pastors, your politicians. Why? They don't have conscience. Remember the vision I told us? How your president got murdered. How they killed him. And I told you he doesn't have conscience, no commiseration, no empathy, no sympathy. Now, the Bible is saying that these people are beasts. Humanly, physically, they appear to be human, but in the abstract, in the inward, they are monsters. That is why if you study the episodes of Paul, I think in Corinthians, Paul said, all flesh is not flesh. All flesh is not flesh. For there, are, for there, is, there is body celestial. There are body celestial and there are body celestial. Body celestial and body terrestrial. There are body celestial and there are body terrestrial. So it means we have heavenly body. Now, they appear to be human, but they are angels. The body terrestrial has to do with humans. Have you seen that now? Adam. Those that are wearing Adam. But we all look alike. We all appear human, but different flesh. Then he didn't stop there. He went further and said, we have the body, the flesh of beasts, the flesh of fish. Have you seen that now? That is why we have aquatic people, marine. People, man-made, they come to this world, they look like you, but they are fish if you should look at them with your spiritual eyes. And we have dogs. That's what the Bible said. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil men. So we have dogs, we have cats, if you look at them with your spiritual eyes. But physically, we all look the same. Because we are body, we are wearing body. 
Are you seeing that now? So now the Bible is saying, all ye beasts of the feet, he's talking about their hearts, what they are in the inside. All ye beasts of the feet, come to devour. It means these people did not enter power mm -mm, to save. They didn't enter power to regulate things. They didn't enter power to help the nation. They didn't enter power to ameliorate, no, but to coagulate, to make things complex, difficult. Are you seeing that? So he said he come to devoid. The essence of their inauguration into power is for destruction, is for annihilation. Are you seeing that? Now, he said, yeah, which is yes. It means with all certainty, with no utter of doubt, ye beast in the forest. So it means that place you see them is not where they are actually. There is a forest. There is, there is, there, there is a forest as a climax. The spiritual weather, the spiritual climax they are is forest. So those in the forest will behave like forestier being. That is why you re, uh, if you remember during my, my, my video while I was showing us the manner of leader that you people have gotten after the election. So you will remember how I described him to be a forestier man. That those that are in the forest, they will only think as forestier people. So look at what God is saying, that they are in the forest. So all they can ever administrate or dispense to the people are things that are forestier. Yes, they will treat you people like animals. They will devour you. So if you read verse 10, the Bible said, His watchmen are blind. This one now has to do with your pastors. His watchmen are blind. It means there are devourers already. But we have watchmen, people who God set as shepherds, as watchers, who ought to trumpet, who ought to alarm the people that something of this nature is around. Are you getting it now? So that the people will not make mistake. But these people are blind. So because they are blind, instead of them to stop the people from electing such leader, they start telling people, vote for this one, vote for that one, vote for this one, vote for that, because they are blind. And at the end, whosoever that now emerge into power, we start administrating forestially. Are you seeing that? Now, his watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. God didn't say, accept this. They are all what? Ignorant. That is why when I come here, I address everybody. I don't exempt anybody. They are all what? Ignorant. They are all dumb. Dogs. They cannot back. Sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. He said they can't back. What does it mean to back? This time he's not talking about prayer. No. He's not talking about prayer. He's talking about reproof. He's talking about rebuke. He's talking about you stopping those politicians from what they are doing. You see they are wrong. You see how they loot money, how they embezzle money. You see the, the manipulations they do. You can't come out to attack them because you eat bribe. You can't come out to attack them because you are afraid of them. You can't come out to attack them because you are corrupt. You love your life. The Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For if a man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Jesus said, he that cannot deny his life will lose it. But when you deny your life, you will find it. He said, if any must come after me, let him first of all deny himself, then pick up the cross and follow. There is a cross and there is a body. And that cross is the cross of truth. So whatever criticism, whatever persecution that it not attract, that's your yoke. Bear it, for there is a recompense and a reward for your faithfulness and fidelity. So you should understand that God is prophesying, showing you allegorically the manner of leaders that will appear in your generation, both in the religious world and in the political world. That you will have devourers as political leaders and you will have blind dog as watchmen in the church. So when you see, the Bible said, yea, they are greedy dogs, which can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, everyone for his own gain, from his quarter. What does he mean by quarter? Different denomination. They are all after their gain. They are all after their pockets. They are all after what they will eat, drink, wear, the private jet that they will fly. They are not interested in national affairs, things that are savaging the nation macaronically. No, they are not after the bombardment that is coming from the government. They are not after the lamentation, the sorrow, the trenody, and the allergy. The nation is singing as a result of the affliction that is coming from those who seem to lead and to rule. 
who are not actually leading or ruling, but they are taskmasters afflicting the people of Israel as though they are in Egypt. They are not in their own country. So you see how Egypt moved, migrated from where it was and entered your country. So there is an atmosphere. There is a sun. There is a moon that is smiting the people. That is why the promise of God said that the sun shall no longer smite thee by the day, nor the moon by the night. Why? Because the atmosphere is Egypt's. And there is an affliction coming from that atmosphere so long you are under it. But God shall remove it by the hand of his servants and there shall be another atmosphere. Now, if you look at the book of Isaiah 65, verse 17, Isaiah, no, before 65, let's see Isaiah 62, verse 6. The Bible said, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, we shall never hold their peace day nor night, ye that make mention of the Lord. Keep not silence. Now, this one is talking about watchmen who are sent to intercede, intercessors. They won't keep quiet. They will keep interceding. But the first one I read before has to do with watchmen who will speak out. So it means for a nation to be delivered, first intercession, second advocation, men who will speak, judges, men who will come and rebuke and execute judgment. What we have in this country are intercessors. The more they intercede, the more the affliction. To tell you that intercession is not enough, advocation is what we complement it. Look at the life of the children of Israel concerning the first Egypt which we read about. The Bible said they were crying and their cry came up to heaven. This one has to do with intercession. But for deliverance to come, God sent advocation. He sent Moses to go and execute judgment. That is why during the days of Gideon, who was one of the judges in Israel, now the Bible said at this time that they were being afflicted by the Midianites. Now you see that now, seen it now that history was repeating again. So it doesn't matter who you are being afflicted. It doesn't matter uh, the labor. No, the labor is not what can. The, the common thing here is that you are afflicted and oppressed by people. So whether Egypt, whether Midianite, it doesn't matter. Whether those in the northern country, it doesn't matter. The important thing is that there is an affliction and people are wailing and crying. The Bible said that an angel of the Lord came to him and said, Thou mighty man of value. So he said to the angel that where are those things? Those good things we heard concerning the Lord, how he delivered Israel from the hand of their oppressors, those things which our fathers told us. How come God has forsaken us? After he finished saying that, the angel of the Lord told him what to do and said, Go in this thy strength. Go in this thy strength. Which strength? Did you ask yourself? Child of God, there was an information which Gideon provided that God delivered Israel by the hand of Moses. So that information was not implemented or executed by anyone in Israel. What am I saying? The advocating part of it. Intercession was being done, but no advocation, no judgmental prophet, no execution. So all they were doing is they were crying, they were interceding, they were waiting on God. But no one struck, no one implemented, no one executed. So when Gideon talked about their deliverance, the angel of God now said, Go in this thy strength. Which strength? The word of God which you have understood. A prophet went out. So Gideon, this information, this word you have gotten is a strength. Move with it. Move with this knowledge. Then there will be liberation. That was the strength that liberated Israel. Because Gideon stood out to judge Israel. What is my point? We keep interceding. We keep praying. We keep making supplications. But no man is backing. No man is rebuking. No man is executing judgment. That is why such a nation will remain in agony, in sorrow. They will keep interceding and keep collecting from Pharaoh. They will keep interceding and keep collecting from the tyrants. They will keep interceding and keep collecting from the absolute monarch who doesn't work according to the constitution. Are you seeing that now? So now, what am I saying? Gideon was able to liberate Israel because he went out. He went out. A certain had a vision of how the sword of Gideon delivered Israel. And he was telling the dream to a brother. And the brother was able to understand the dream and tell him that this is the sword of Gideon. Surely God will use him to deliver Israel from the hands of the Midianites. And Gideon heard it and was not encouraged the more that that which the Lord told him is true. Are you seeing that now? So if we are interceding and God hears the cry, if God wants to set us free, he needs a man. He needs a man. A man must make himself available. Who is available? Nobody. They are all sleeping dogs. They don't bark. They seek their own gain in their own quarters. 
Are you seeing it now? So, but God is giving us a promise that this thing will not continue. This thing will not what? Continue. And for this not to continue, let's see what the Bible says in Isaiah 65. Isaiah 65, starting from 17 to 19. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. What is this new heaven? God is saying that the climax, the Egypt that is in the atmosphere, we go. And the new earth has to do with the people who are in alignment with the Egypt, who are working hand to hand with the Egypt, the prince of the world, the Satan that stays in the atmosphere, in the climax, that is using the moon and the sun against those in the world. Have you asked yourself why the Bible said the moon shall no longer smite thee? Have you asked yourself why the Bible said the sun shall no longer smite thee? Because there is a power in the moon and in the sun that is using the atmosphere to afflict the people, that is manipulating things. That is why the nation can be driving like this now and they believe that they are driving through the right path. Before you know, something will just divert the thing and you find yourself driving through the wrong track. Why? There is an atmosphere that controls whatever that happens here. So until that atmosphere is attacked and changed, what you see here on earth will not follow. No, it is that heaven that is controlling the earth. And what does the earth represent? The earth has to do with your bloody politicians. It has to do with your greedy pastors and prophets. And the sinners, the Gentiles, those who polluted this world. So God is saying he will remove that heaven, which is the powers there. That which is their government there, which is their dispensation there, for there is a time given to Satan to rule in Nigeria. So he's going to remove that government and he will also remove the one on earth because the one on earth is as a result of the one that is in the first heaven, the firmament. That is why he said, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. It means all these things will pass. Now let's look at 18. 18 now, we simplify things. But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. Who is Jerusalem? Nigeria. You see that now? For I create a Jerusalem, a rejoicing, and her people a joy. So it means the sorrow you see will go. Why? The first heaven will go, and the, the first earth will go, and a new heaven will come, and a new earth will come. Change of government. That is why I told us in my previous sermons, especially last year, I said we rule from the firmament. We reign from the firmament. So if any man must control his generation, he must first of all ascend into the firmament to go and cast down powers so he can rule. Didn't you read that the dragon ascended and casted down the stars? So the stars that ought to have shined in this world, they are all casted down. So the dragon is reigning and he has exchanged their original destiny for something else and they are complacent and comfortable, satisfied with the half bread Satan gave to them. Are you seeing that now? So that is what the Bible said in Revelation 11, that these two witnesses we are sent. Who are the two witnesses? The man prophet T.B. Joshua and the young prophet. And I told us during my sermon concerning um, the two witnesses, I told us that you will not see T.B. Joshua physically, no. You will only see him spiritually, maybe appearing, just like others are hearing that is, uh, are seeing that he's appearing or hearing. Now, you will see him appearing and you will see his name reigning. But you will not see him bodily. But the young prophet you will see bodily. Why? Because during their sorrow, the young prophet was hidden. He was suffering secretly and T.B. Joshua was reigning publicly. So when the time for the young prophet now to reign publicly, T.B. Joshua will be in the secret. So if you want to understand the mysteries well, like I said before, go to the, uh, the comment section. You will see a link there that will teach you mysteries about the two witnesses to your clarity. And I remember the Lord gave me a question that time. He was teaching me this. He said, what man of God died? Which man of God died and people started celebrating and they were rejoicing and sharing gifts as the Bible denoted there. And when I looked around, no one except T.B. Joshua. And I asked you people this same question. If you can provide a man who died and people started rejoicing, a national man and people started rejoicing after his death, even believers and they were sharing gifts, then you'll be able to prove me wrong. But if you know not of any, keep quiet for they are the fulfillment of this scripture. I teach you time and I teach you season so that you will not have any reason to give fitty excuses. For Paul said, oh man, you are inexcusable. You can't tell God that you don't understand the errand you are. 
that you are in the earth time. That is why God has sent you an end time prophet, an end time teacher, to explain these things so that you will prepare yourself. And most of the people that will die, will die because of the transgression which they committed against God by persecuting the man prophet, E.B. Joshua. I'm telling you the gospel truth. That is why if you study that revelation, what, and you will see that the Bible says 7,000 people died as a result of earthquake. And I told you that earthquake is not a physical earthquake. It means there will be a shaking in the earth. There will be a horrific, a tremendous evil that will shake the whole earth. And this will swallow up large numbers of people. And these people, some of them will be your pastor, some of them will be ordinary people, your politicians. And when these people die, the Bible now said that the remnant were affrighted. What does it mean to be affrighted? To be made afraid. To be made afraid. Why? Judgment. And they now gave glory to God. And that's why I told us, until you see judgment, you won't see revival. All this revival, 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 you start putting hand, hand be is noise. Big noise. You people are dreaming. And you, you, it's just a, a mere fantasy, a mirage. It can never come until judgment comes. It is when judgment comes, fear will come. And it is the fear of the Lord that is the beginning of wisdom, which is righteousness. So they must be afraid for them to yield to what God is saying. When they are too comfortable, they are too fleshly, too relaxed. They will please Satan. They will obey the flesh. So you see, judgment is coming because of the sin committed against this man and other abominations that are committed. And I showed us that the Bible said that this blood, the soul of the saints are crying under the altar, which is their grave. Say, Lord, how long will it take for you to avenge us of those who persecuted us in the earth? And God said, wait, let them persecute your brothers that are in the earth. Let them do the same to them. Then I will avenge you. So at this time when this thing was happening, T.B. Joshua was not yet born. I was not yet born. You were not yet born. All these things happened that the saints are crying. So, and God said, wait, meaning God knew about T.B. Joshua. He knew about those believers that will be persecuted also. He knew about those believers that are crucified today by the, 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 the Fulanis or, or whatever, the Hesmen. So he knew about those that will die for the gospel. He knew. So he said, wait for this thing to happen. Why? The message is continuity. Prophecy is continuity. The agenda of God is continuity. So he knows about them. Even though he didn't call their name, that he knew them before they existed. So when you see these things happening to people, it is because prophecy said it will happen. Then after this, there will be judgment. There is a promise that judgment will come. So those of you who are preaching rubbish, messages of grace, God does not kill, God does not yank, God does not heal, God does not who. All those things are balonies. They are what? Balonies. You are just rattling. You, 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 you are making noise. Because if you look, God is telling you that after these people are persecuted, judgment will come. People will die. He's not saying that it's Satan. So you see, such a message is not perfect. Such a message is deficient. You have to go back to your room and go and, you know, restructure your message. You have to do the work of a doctor. Try to treat it because your message is cancerous. It has a Ebola. So you have to treat that message because God is a killer. Are you, I'm talking to Damina now. And I've heard you now. Why trying to correct a man? You said God kills and make it alive. After you said God does not kill. Are you not seeing the contradiction? So these are the people who steal his word. And he won't go free. I'm telling you, he won't. His destruction is so close. What did I say? His destruction is so close. As you are hearing me now, I know you are listening to me. Your destruction is close until you stand out and confess your iniquity and correct these errors, you will have no peace. Because all those pastors that steal his word, that prophesy lies, God said they will all die. All those politicians, they will all die because judgment has come and it will start from the church. Judgment has come and it will start from the church. So God is saying there will be a new heaven and a new earth. All those of you who managed the first earth, all those of you who control the first earth, you have to go. Because if you don't go, new heaven and new earth will not come. Yes. And that dragon that taught you people what you are doing today, you will suffer in hell with him. That is what the Bible said in Revelation. Those false prophets, they will be casted in hell with it, where the dragon is, where the beast is. So these are the first things that will happen before this one I quoted. The things I taught you now, these are the first things that will happen before the other side. When they cross to the other side, they will go and join the, the, their master. So, those of you who hate Prophet E.B. Joshua, you are digging your grave. Because you don't know that it is an angel that you are persecuting. You don't know that you killed an angel. You don't know. You don't know that you, 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 you provoked the spirit of death against yourself and your own family. 
And because God doesn't want you people to give excuse that you don't know, he sent me before the time to go and tropez, to bring clarity, so you won't say you don't understand. It is your hatred and mara that is stopping you now from receiving. It's not clarity. It's not as if you don't understand what I'm saying. It's your hatred. Let it go before it will be too late. I told you people that my messages, my channel is a secret. It's hidden from the world. Those who come across my channel came across it because God want them to come across it. There is a way God normally shows me that he's bringing people. At a point, I will be in a vision. I will see subscription, like people subscribing, subscribing. And as soon as I come out of that vision, once I open my phone, I will see new set of people flooding to my channel. Are you getting it now? So as soon as a, a certain time comes, like after this flood of people come, it will pause. So it will not be these people that I will be feeding now, teaching now. No subscriber again. Then later, I will still see again large numbers coming again. Then before I know physically, I will start seeing them. What is God telling me? I have given you numbers of followers. Inculcate them. When I'm faithful with my task, he brings another numbers of people. So if you think you came here by mistake, you are joking. You didn't come here by mistake. God brought you here. Both the goats, the sheep, and the dog, the ravening wolf, he brought all of you here. Yes. So that you, you cannot give excuse. But if you choose to perish after hearing my message, your own blood will be on your head. What did I say? Your own blood will be on your head. I believe I have spoken and I'm clarified. Go to the link and go and understand the two witnesses. It has part one, part two, part three. Finish them up and have sense. Because I know some of you now, they have removed your sense from, from your, your brain. They have removed it. You are not thinking again. Damina has zombilized you people. He has reanimated you people. So, when you are done, sit down and cry to God and tell God to show you the truth. Stop following name and labor. Stop following TB Joshua and stop following Damien. I'm not talking about their message. I'm talking about the name. Follow truth. If you hear truth from Damina, take it. If you hear lie, filter it out. If you hear truth from TB Joshua, take it. If you hear lie, filter it out. If you hear truth from Son of David, take it. If you hear lie, filter it out. Stop following names because it will kill you. Paul has corrected that error and have rehearsed it to your hearing. So you have no excuse. You have no excuse. This is the voice of heaven. Son of David, wisdom is crying in the streets of YouTube. I'm sure you have heard everything the son of David has said in the video and I'm sure you paid serious attention to everything he has to say. He said so many things but I want to just point out uh, a few of them. He spoke about Ibedamina's uh, members, Ibedamina's supporters always attacking him each time he mentions the name of uh, Ibedamina and he also gets attacked each time he mentions uh, tb joshua this is what i want us to say especially if you are a believer you see what he said there is no in fact there is no lie in what he have said i'm not saying that the Benjamin members are attacking him I, i'm just coming from this angle please be patient and listen to me i'm saying that what he, he is saying there is very correct due to the fact that church members believers are fond of attacking people when they mention the name of their favorite when they mention the name of a pastor they love or the name of a pastor of their church they behave like uh, davido and the uh, whiskey fans immediately you mention davido's name davido fans will attack you immediately you mention whiskey name whiskey fans will attack you that is the way most believers behave the rate at which they they, they insult people I, I posted a video of a guy talking about um, and the Bible and Christianity and all the rest. Come and see insult. You can check the, 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 that video on, on this channel. That one is even the least. Go to Facebook and see what is happening there. Go to Facebook. The first comment I saw there was somebody calling the young man a fool. The, another person said, you are foolish. You, are, you see, I will always say this to believer. Insulting people is not what we are supposed to be doing. Abusing people is not something we should be doing. Uh, Jesus Christ said something. Uh, I've forgotten the, that scripture, but I will just paraphrase it and put it in a way that you understand. He said that if you love those people that love you, what separates you or what sets you apart from the worldly people? Because the worldly people also do it. They also do it. Now you... If you abuse people because they mentioned your pastor's name, what makes you different from those Davido and Whiskey fans? 
You said you're a believer. Oh. You said that you are godly. But any little thing you are triggered to insult and abuse people. You said you are perfect. You have been perfected in Christ. But have you perfected your emotions? When they mention the name of our pastors, we, the rate at which some of us abuse and insult these people, it does not show that some of us, we have control over ourselves and over our emotions. Maturity is when you come online, you see something you don't like, you type, you type, you type, you type, you finish typing. You say, hmm, this thing I'm typing now, is it consistent with what Christ wants me to be doing? You delete it. I have been in that situation. There, I have, there are people I have, I have typed long messages for to reply based on what they even said to me. Even on this channel. After typing it, uh, I, 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 I tell myself that this is not who I am supposed to be. I delete that message. Because love is such that uh, you, you have to do it even when you are not okay with it. You don't say, I, I love you. When you love people, only when they are on track. Only when they are doing what you want them to do. Only when they are saying what you want them to say. Only when they are operating the way you want them to operate. Then that is not a love at all. Because everybody is always happy with somebody when that somebody is doing what they love. Or when that somebody is doing what they like. Everybody is always happy with somebody when that somebody is doing the things they want them to do. Or the things they are happy about. When you will know if you truly love somebody, if you truly like you have love in your heart for somebody, it's when that person has made a mistake. When that person crosses the red line, you still love, you still show that person love. Love is not when somebody is doing the right thing alone and, and, and you say, I, I love you. No. That is not love. There is this saying that if you want to know people that love you, Fuck up, sorry for using that word, mess up and see how many will stand by you. If you want to know how many people loves you, mess up and see how many will stand by you. Love is not when somebody is doing the things you want. Christ advised us that we love people. Christ advised us that we love our enemies. These ones, I don't see them as enemies. I see these people as people sharing their opinion. But look at how brutal, how aggressive some of us get. Yet we'll come out, mm, I'm a believer, I'm a this, I'm a, a... Listen, until you learn to tolerate certain things, you have not gotten to that point where you say, I am a follower of Christ. Because the person we are following say, love even your enemies. Pray for those people that have hurt and persecuted you. Are you going to follow the Bible or not? If you want to follow the Bible, follow the Bible. If you don't want to follow the Bible, leave it. It's not one leg is here. One leg is here. He say, uh, 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 that an eye for an eye. You, if you slap me, I will not turn my left cheek. I will slap you back. Love is... <laughs> Ah, uh, please see. Let, I, I need us to understand that there are some, certain things that are not funny. If this prophet, the son of David, have said something that you don't like, and this is what I always tell people. After I watched, uh, I saw the comments under uh, the, the video I posted uh, about the, the young man talking about the Bible and Christianity. I, I was explaining to somebody that the best way to, if you say somebody is not doing something right, come, I've not, I've said something that is not right, come with a counter argument, a rebata, an argument that is better than that one. Try, try to teach and educate that person. Abusing will not change that person. If you think that this person is operating or speaking out of ignorance, come with the light the person needs. Come with the right knowledge that person needs. If you need, if you feel that, if you feel that if somebody is speaking out of ignorance and is speaking error, come with a better argument. Come with the light that is going to liberate that person. Insulting that person is not going to change anything. That person will even, <laughs> will even stick, will, will, that your insult will even motivate that person to remain in that ignorance. You cannot want to correct me by insult is not correction. 
You cannot correct me by saying I'm foolish. I even see the people saying fully, fully, without even coming with any, any light as the people that are totally ignorant. It's just like when uh, Dr. Ibedamena speaks about tithe. You see Christians, you are a foolish man, you're a stupid man, you don't know what you're saying, you are ignorant. Baba, sister, come with a scripture now to counter what you have said. How do you correct? You want somebody to learn, you are, you are insulted. If I say John 3.16, uh, the Bible did not say, for God so loved the world, that did that come with the John 3.16 where the Bible said it. If I say tithe is not good, come with a scanter argument with your scripture to tell me that tithe is good. Mind you, I'm not saying that tithe is not good. I'm just giving you an example. So if the son of David have said something, I've mentioned T.B. Joshua, uh, Dr. Ibedamena, and you feel that what he's saying is ignorant, please come with a better argument. Come with the scripture to, to, to free him of that his ignorance. Abusing him is not the best. Insulting him is not the best. Believers must learn and understand this. And try to understand and know that love is what we need right now. Abusing people is not consistent with what God wants from us. How can you wake up every day you're abusing somebody? Every day you're abusing somebody. And I don't know how some of us do it. Because I cannot just come online and what I will be doing with my time, with my life, is to be abusing, calling, you are fully get out, you are useless. Hey, Christians can insult you. And after all these things, we carry Bible, we go for evangelism. I'm not judging you. I just want you to know that that is not the way you should be doing things. That is not the way things are supposed to be done. That is, that is not the way things are supposed to be done. We have, to, we have to do better. We have to do better, honestly. We really have to do better. We have to do better. Let me no, no uh, waste your time. Let me, let me just end it here because if we keep talking, we, we might not end uh, today. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please do it to subscribe to the channel. Turn on your notification bell so whenever I post another video, you'll be notified. If you don't subscribe, I want to say thank you to you. Thank you for stopping by to watch our video. We love and appreciate the support you give us on this channel. May God bless you. May God reward you in the name of Jesus. Please don't forget, share the video and also share the platform. Share with your friends and loved ones. God bless you as you do so. I'll see you in the next one. You are blessed. I have good news for you. You will win. It's been written. I am what I am by the grace of God. As long as that grace does not fail, Satan will never fail. This revival you see will not be aborted.